Hi there, my name's Ed Butler. Welcome to Business Daily from the BBC. Today, the credit crunch facing dozens of the world's poorest countries. We are in completely uncharted territory. How do indebted governments handle these debt levels? How do they manage their debt? How do they continue to service it if borrowing costs rise? Billions are now owed, and some countries simply won't manage the repayments, we're told. So who should foot the bill? The lenders are just as responsible for these crises as the borrowers. The loans that have actually been given have been at very high interest rates. That level of interest was never payable. Never a borrower nor a lender be. Business Daily from the BBC. Emerging market strategists recently said we have just a couple of years to figure out a support plan or countries could be facing a systemic crisis. And some now say that plan must involve widespread debt relief. Tim Jones represents the Jubilee campaign. It's a non-profit focused on this issue. We estimate there are 54 countries in debt crisis, which means that people suffer because it means governments have less money to spend on social services, on things like health and education, on social protection. Overall, this makes it very difficult to recover from the COVID crisis because these debt payments are increasing. There isn't the money that is needed to be expanded to tackle all these problems. We're going to get into cycles like this every few years. It always happens. Countries overstretch, they overreach, they get themselves into trouble and they have to pull back the reins to to live within their means. I mean, isn't the lesson of this simply that countries were overreached when the times were good and when interest rates were low? No, this should not be seen as inevitable. And also, it takes two to tango. The lenders are just as responsible for these crises as the borrowers. We had a period of debts um, being cancelled back in the early 2000s. And that did free up governments uh, to have a lot more space to expand um, things like healthcare and education spending. But then since the global financial crisis of 2008, there has been a big increase in loans to governments because of lower interest rates although the loans that have actually been given have been at very high interest rates. So, for example, loans to Zambia at um, 9% interest, which is always going to be reckless. The, that level of interest was never payable. And so those lenders now need to share in the cost of the crisis of the created. One of the reasons we have this cycle of crises is that when the debt problems arise, too often the original lenders get bailed out and the problem gets passed elsewhere. And that means that you keep getting the cycle of crises because lenders keep acting recklessly. We need to make lenders pay for the bad decisions so that they act more responsibly in the future. Right. Talk me through that. What will happen? What do you expect to happen, typically, if it's business as usual? How will this play out? So the standard response is for institutions like the International Monetary Fund and the World Bank to lend more money, which enables the interest payments to um, private lenders to keep being paid. But in the meantime, there's mass austerity pushed on countries in a vain attempt to try and pay the debt. What we need to see is upfront restructuring of the debt, so some of the debt cancelled to get it down to a sustainable level, including with all the creditors who've lent the money originally, not allowing um, any to escape and so to share that burden across all creditors. Right. You don't think that that's just going to incentivise more reckless borrowing by governments from poor countries around the world? No, because the problem we have is that reckless lending is constantly incentivised. What we need to see to end the cycle cycle of crises is for lenders to take a hit so that they act more responsibly in the future. The G20 did say, didn't it, back in 2020, that they were trying to introduce a new debt relief mechanism as a result of the pandemic, offering something like $20 billion worth of debt relief, or at least pledging it in April 2020. Is that not enough? 
Um, it didn't happen is the number one thing. The G20 scheme proposed to suspend payments, but only governments took part in the scheme. They didn't make private lenders take part. So in the end, only a quarter of debt payments were suspended. And the main reason for that failure is because they failed to get private lenders to take part. So one structure we need is a comprehensive debt restructuring scheme so that it is clear when... Um, a government can't pay, there is a mechanism to get that debt written down across all creditors. Tim Jones of the Jubilee campaign with one view on how to solve the developing world's debt crisis. That's it for this edition of Business Daily. Faria Masood was my producer today. Thanks for listening. (laughs) 